Hello, and welcome everybody to the rundown. Uh, I'm your host, Shwenku, and I'm on with uh, my good pal Tyrese, that is at London's Theory on Twitter. Uh, the Knicks lost, what was it, 108 100? I don't give a shit. Uh, they lost 108. I mean, I do give a shit. They lost 108 100. I don't care what the final score was. Uh, to the Bulls on the second end of back to back, where Flash Tucker ejected 11 minutes of the game on a call that I. I don't know. I'll never get it. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it a lot more probably. But before we do that, I do have to announce that with Bet Online, the tournament is here. Bet Online is your bracket headquarters for the season with the best bracket contest out there and odds, lines, and info on every game and every round, or every round right up until the national championship. You can access the most up to the minute, ma- minute wagering information anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. And even track your bracket real time all the way through the tournament. Head to the Bet Online app today and get in all the action. Remember, use promo code Belief, B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here. A Believe Nation, as you all know, we partnered with Cut, the social betting platform. Cut is a peer to peer betting platform that allows you to bet directly against your buddies and other fans. That's right. Join the Believe Knicks crew, B L E A V Knicks crew, on Cut today and bet directly against me, Schwinn. And Tyrese on your favorite sports, pop culture, and political topics. Why you'd want to bet on politics? Who knows? Ask Cut. Cut is the ultimate put your money where your mouth is platform, and it's legal here in New York. Maybe you shouldn't be allowed to bet on politics in New York, but that's just me. Be sure to follow at CutBet on all your social media channels and download the app via the App Store or Cut.com. Use code BLEAVENIX, B L E A V N I X, for a 10% deposit bonus. Um, yeah. Uh, so the Knicks lost today, 1-800. I'm going to say a few things. I'm just going to say a few things. First of all, the hot, the heart, the heart ejection was a joke. I, I have no idea what that was. Like that, he got fouled on the play. They called a foul on the floor. I don't know what initiated the review for a flagrant two or any type of flagrant. I don't know what could have been seen on the replay to suggest it was a flagrant two. I think that's honestly the worst call I've ever seen in my life. And the Knicks were already down. I want to think they were down 11 by that point. Um, and you're down 11. You lose Josh Hart right when you get OG back effectively. And... You know, I, I'm sure the the free throw count. I don't know what the fucking free throw count was tonight. I'm sure it probably looks like it was even. The Knicks got a really bad whistle tonight. Um, it is what it is. Uh, the other thing I want to just say before we start any re- reading comments and, and discussing this further is, I find the entire conversation about the lineups and rotations and all this stuff extremely disingenuous. Um, we are dealing with players, various players on minutes limits. That's just among players that are active. Okay. OG clearly was on a minutes limit tonight. For example, Hartenstein, we know has been on a minutes limit. Mitch, very obviously, even if he's not on a minutes limit, he has to be because he cannot fucking move for more than like two minutes at a time. Um, Burks is giving you absolutely nothing. Bogdanovich, when he's not hitting shots, is not giving you much. And there's nobody on the team that can run the offense aside from Jalen Brunson. So every time he sits, the offense completely craters. On top of that, you are, I I just hope everybody remembers this. You're out Julius Randle, who is an all-star, all-NBA caliber power forward. Um, You lost Josh Hart again, 11 minutes in the game today. I don't know, based on what the team has available to it, what exactly you want Tibbs to do to one, like they'll just go through the things that people want. He should make sure that nobody plays too many minutes that we play perfectly balanced lineups on both sides of the floor, defensively and offensively three Alec Burks should never play Four, They need to win games. So balancing all of these things, how you come to fucking the conclusion tonight that Tibbs completely fucked this game up because Precious Chua played minutes. And I just want to say this. I I totally understand Precious was terrible tonight. I, you're not going to get an argument from me. 
I will I will say this. I will say this. Press shoot tonight in 19 minutes, minus two. Dante DiVincenzo, who is clearly a better player, clearly been a better player for the next this season, was a minus six in his minutes. Mind you, Precious played more than a few minutes that involved Deuce McBride at point with him next to a center. Um, do I th- Would I have put DiVincenzo back on the floor sooner? Sure. I probably would have. Do I know that DiVincenzo didn't have some arbitrary minutes limit that was assigned to him? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. None of us knows. None of us knows what's happening with various minutes limits, various guys in this team. Um, and judging Tibbs on a, on a second night of a back-to-back where these guys are, they gave you everything they got. They give you, they're giving you everything they have. And yeah, yeah, man, I, I understand they got blitzed on the glass tonight. I get it. It's frustrating. It pisses me off more than anything. Nothing annoys me more. Tyrese knows there's nothing annoys me more in the world than giving up offensive rebounds. That is literally the thing in the world that annoys me more than anything. So I get it. But bitching and whining and constantly, like, I'm not a fucking, I'm not like some fucking huge tips believer. I just don't understand how you expect perfection from a team and from a coach Given all these very restrictions, I, I, I refuse. I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I don't think it needs to be understood because I think it's illogical. I think it's completely illogical. Um, for them to even get a split on this back-to-back, given the guys they have available to them, says plenty about the character of this team and what the coach is coaxing out of what he has available to them. They need to get basically two wins, probably three wins. Or they definitely need to get three wins, probably two wins the rest of the way. We'll see what happens. Okay, we'll we'll see, but to, and that's to ensure uh, a top six automatic playoff berth, right? Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I just, I think at some point it's it's okay to just give them the benefit of the doubt, man. It is okay to see a team come back from twenty one down last night and win a game. What was it? they they won one twenty to one hundred nine? So we my double digits. It's okay to see them try and battle back from the start of a game where, yeah, I would love for them to get off to better starts of game. Guess what? They're on, the ba- they're on a back-to-back extremely shorthanded, as they've been for months, playing a team that has rested for four games in a row. Or, for, sorry, four days in a row, I should say. Like, it's not that surprising they got off to a slow start. It's not that surprising Chicago is beating them to lose balls and had more energy. Yeah, it, it, you can call that an excuse if you want. That's fine. Uh, then, yes, I'm making excuses. You call me red-handed. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just not going to, I'm not going to complain about this team's effort. I'm not going to complain about Tibbs' rotations tonight. And I'm not going to complain about where they stand as, as things are right now. I mean, I understand that. Are you crying? No. I, have. I talk shit about Sam having allergies and I have allergies. <laughs> I deserve this. Um, what I will say is that when they were making that comeback in the fourth quarter, I just – I feel like at that point, I get it. He's had a rough game, but, like, I would just put in DiVincenzo because Precious was giving you nothing. Legitimately, legitimately nothing. And at that point, you just need even the threat of spacing in order to open up driving in for Bunsen. I, and, I, and, and only thing I would say is that I don't think they lost this. I think they lost this game because they couldn't end defensive possessions. I and I don't, and I don't think DiVincenzo. I mean, he he didn't stop it all night. Like, I, I don't care. I don't care about Javon. Javante Green played the fucking game of his life because he was playing for like a fucking contract. And who the fuck cares? Fuck that guy. Um, like he played like he's dying to get an NBA contract. Cool, fantastic. He was destroying DiVincenzo tonight. Another thing, I don't particularly care about. Like DiVincenzo didn't have it tonight. I, I'm not. I'm not sitting here. I'm not going to complain about DiVincenzo. He didn't have it tonight. The guy's fucking giving you everything he's got. So to me, it's like you had some choices. Yeah. And I, I agree with you. I would have gone with DiVincenzo. He didn't go that way. I don't really feel like, I mean, he played a pretty small lineup throughout the third quarter and they had multiple. I mean, I, I thought when they missed those, they had like a corner three from Deuce, a corner three from OG and above the break wide open three from DiVincenzo. They all missed. And those felt like, man, if you don't get any, you don't get one of those, those were killers. Sorry to interrupt you, but I I just, I agree with you. I just, I I find it a bit much to get like 
just go nuts about the rotations and stuff like that tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I just I'm done watching versus if you ever play basketball, meaning like play meaningful basketball. I just really don't want to watch him on the four either. That's just uh, he's not a four, man. Like, I don't I feel like to be a four in the modern NBA, you need to be able to either shoot or be able to do something as an um offensive hub if you can't shoot. Because there are fours who can't shoot, but they offer playmaking. Um, and he doesn't offer any of that. He's a shit processor. He doesn't shoot. He can't even hit corner well, three. He can't like, he shoot. Can't That's a really big problem because he just can't shoot. Yeah, like he he does not do anything positive offensively outside um of the basket. So you can't play him at the four, but when he plays the five, you just see the fact that like he's smaller than most centers. You can I think he's only six eight. So he can like, only he can only play the five next to like Randall because Randall can do a lot of the muscular brutish stuff that he can't do. Yeah, but like you like he is not gonna be able to like um box out against larger centers. And you saw it again with like you put him against Drummond, Drummond was just Drummond well, ignored I, it. Drum Drummond, I I I I can't even get started with this guy today. Um I, I Josh Hart getting a flagrant too, fine. You want me to accept that, I'll accept it, but Drummond can just fucking like punch Brunson in the face and that's fine. It's okay. No big deal. Okay. I I, I don't I, again, uh you look anybody will look at the free throws and I'm like, oh, how can you complain about the free throws? Bulls only shot 16, you shot 24. I promise you that <laughs> I, I thought the whistle tonight was ridiculous. Um yeah, I, I thought Drummond Drummond I to me, he got away with fucking murder tonight. Uh, it was crazy some of the stuff that he was getting with. Javante Green just Fucking, I mean, the him, the, the one that they didn't call. So it's what is like 101 97. Nick's got a shot. Brunson has inside position. He's going to get the rebound unless Javante Green runs him over, which he did. If they call that foul, Brunson's going to line for two free throws. It's one possession game. You know, I mean, he's going to make at least one of two there. It's a one possession game. Instead, he runs him over, gets a putback, six point game. I mean, that was it. Like they, they just had nothing after that. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I, I just really struggle finding things to bitch about when I, I think they're giving you what they have. And like, I agree with you. Precious sucked tonight and he's not been good for a while. And Bogdanovich, you know, three of nine from the field, nine points. He missed a, 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 a an open three that would have been a big shot for us. Like I get all that. Bur I mean, Burks, I, I, I he just can't play anymore. He just like, I, there's no way I'm believing that Shake Milton. If you know what, if Jake Milton is so bad that he can't play, then just don't play Burks. I don't care how you have to figure it out, figure it out. Just do it because this guy is a joke. Like they come out of a timeout and he just throws the ball away. Like that was unbelievable to me. Unbelievable garbage performance. Apparently he had two rebounds tonight. I don't remember either of those. Uh, zero points again. Zero assists again, because how can you get an assist if you don't pass, Tyrese? It's a hard thing to do. Um, he did have a turnover, which I imagine was not on a pass, because why would he pass the ball? That's crazy. Um, yeah, I, I just... Again, like... And here's here's the funniest part about this game. All right. Deuce McBride, plus three. OG Ananobi, plus five. Jalen Brunson, 42 minutes, minus two. You lose this game by eight, like... I mean, Hartenstein plus two also, by the way, in 30 minutes. But, like, they can't function when Brunson's off the floor. It's really that simple. Like, I, I, I don't know. We can sit here and talk about various lineups and guys you could throw in this place and that place or whatever. But, like, they cannot win when Brunson's off the floor. And that will continue to rem remain a problem and probably will be the reason why, if and when they make the playoffs, they lose a series more than anything else um, and lose games more than anything else because Brunson played 42 tonight. Um, so in his six minutes, you lost by six points. Like they basically lost a point a minute when he's off floor. Um, I guess you could say they lost minus two when he was on it too in 42, but like, you know, it just there. I just, I don't know how much analysis it requires beyond that. Like, if you cannot score when he's off the floor, you can't do anything when he's off the floor. You can't even run. They, they, they cut the lead to what, five at the end of the third? Yeah. And he sits for like a minute and 10 seconds, 
and they're down 11. That's the game. That is the fucking game right there. You know, like I, I just, I cannot, can't do it. And you know, maybe, maybe this is, you know, I agree. They can't keep getting off to shitty starts, but they clearly did not have their legs under them to start this game. Like they were slow all over the floor. Again, Dante, I'm not even shitting on him because he just had a bad game. And I get why he's had a big game. The guy's been playing a fuck ton of minutes the entire season. He's been a warrior. I think he's missed one game, right? Just that Orlando game right before the all-star break. Yeah. Um, Like, it's okay to me if he has a bad game and he's gassed and he doesn't box out and he's getting burned by Io fucking Desunmu off the bounce. Like, I get it. He's just tired. But it's what it is. Like, honestly, I would be totally fine with them punting on this Milwaukee game on Sunday. They're not. They're never going to do that. Um, And prioritizing the last four games of the season. But they're not going to do that. Uh, we'll see what happens. But I, I just – I don't know what else to say other than that. I, I just – I have a tough time criticizing this team too much. Um, all right. Well, let's get to some comments. Tony Farino. Fuck this game. I that's concur. real. Yep. I think that sums it up. Uh, John Larry. Team needs to stop digging themselves in such big holes in the first quarter. Playing catch up is really hard. I agree. It is. It is really hard. Tonight's the I, tonight. I get it. Tonight, like last night, is kind of a one where the stuff you're talking about precious, right? Like. Those are the like that dug us in a hole in that game where you're playing precious at the four, and they just I mean they completely fucking got destroyed in those minutes. So then you're just having to fucking run guys on the ground the rest of the way. I get that, and I agree with that. Like that is a definite fair criticism. But tonight, I think they just dug themselves in the hole because they just didn't have it. Yeah, I mean I get it. Back to back off a team versus a team that like was on three days rest. It's kind of think. Yeah, it's. Oh, four between games. Sorry, yeah. That's an insane disparity. So, yeah. Uh, Joe Schmo, OG plus five. The man never loses minutes. Monster. This uh, week lives. We will never lose. We'll always have that. We will always have that. Connor McCollum, schedule loss, ridiculous ejection, pressures being nasty. On to the next one. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, who knows? I mean, we know what's going to happen. The Bucks uh, will magically uh, play like championship contenders against us on Sunday. So very excited to watch that. I also imagine Giannis will miraculously be active. So uh, congrats to them on on that win. Um, I'm sure it'll be very exhilarating for them. They can go fuck themselves. You know who else can go fuck themselves very specifically? Malachi Flynn. Him too. Shea Gilders Alexander. Oh, That's dude, where... That's so, that's so bullshit. He I, literally... Sacrificed his quad and their playoff chances for a guarded moment. That's so lame, dude. He needs to fuck off forever. Um, I hate him. I hate him with all of my heart, with everything in my heart. I hate that man. Um, fuck him and fuck Canada. Oh, John. Whoa. What did Canada do to you, dude? That's where Emmanuel quickly plays. Yeah, but nice he's not. Canada. He's not from there. Uh, John Leary, not to beat a dead horse, but Burks and Bullion just kill his team. That's why McBride has to play forty every night because you can't trust the best to play every minutes. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, and the other thing too is like I get it. Like I was, ups- I was pissed too when he played Bullion and Burks together with Brunson in, in the second quarter. I understand that, but like, isn't that like? Again, I don't know how you can be, be upset that he doesn't use depth. I'm not saying, and I'm not saying everybody's criticisms of this. I know I understand this is not like everybody has the same exact criticisms, but if you want him to use depth and you want him to avoid guys burning out and playing too many minutes, like you, you kind of have to at least accept that he might try something like that. And this guy's gave him nothing. I mean, Burks, is, Burks especially, like. Boyan, I'll continue to say it. I think he is actually trying. He's actually trying to like do things within what the Knicks are asking him to do. Burks is just fucking out there, bro. He's just out there taking pull up threes. That I'm like, can you just never do that again? Actually, could you just never play again? That'd be great. He's just fucking like you know what's gonna happen when he dribbles the ball. It's gonna be a bad pull up. Or he's going to turn the ball over just dribbling it off his dick or trying to force it to a window that makes no sense. And it's just, like, frustrating to see. I, I like that he keeps trying to draw fouls and he hasn't gotten one in, like, three weeks. It's like, dude, maybe maybe they, they're they not going to give it to you. 
Have you thought about that? Maybe just spot up. That would be awesome. Like, I would be like, dude, if you just missed spot up threes, I would at least be like, okay, I can live with that. Like, you're 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 missing good shots. I the the, the, the some of the stuff the the pull up three he took in the first half. I thought his fucking ACLs were about to snap when he like, like kind of like you know braced himself to go up for it. I was like, are you good? Is your knee about to just break in half? Um, yeah. He. I mean, I would. I, I'm. I would love to see shake over him at this point. Um, John, Larry, dude, Jacob top of the chance or something, dude. I don't know. I know you don't mean that. I know you don't mean that. I might. Yeah. Um. John Larry, are you worried about this team losing four out of last five? I would not be worried about this team losing four out of the last five. I would not either. Um, obviously, that's easier said than done. But um, the good thing for them, again, which I've said before, they have the tiebreak over everybody else that they play. Or everybody else that's chasing them effectively. Except for the they Pacers. Have, no, they have the they have the tiebreak over the Pacers. No, they don't. We lost. Yes, they, no, we beat them. Two out of two out of three. We beat them. No, bro, we lost the Pacers two out of three. Oh, that's right. We did. Fuck. Yeah. All right. So we need the Heat to win that game, actually. That sucks. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Um, all right, well, that sucks. Uh all right. I'm not that worried about it, but um, again, like if you want tibs to play these guys less minutes it's hard to do when you're having all these teams chase them it's tough it's tough ask uh all right joe schmo i don't want to hear nobody shit on heart anymore i love them rebounds right now yeah i mean i he didn't have it to start this game but he's not had it to start a lot of games recently and then he ends up with like 15 rebounds so yeah Hawkeye 420, if there's anything to take away from the past week, the rest will continue to hate on us in the playoffs. Their bullshit got worse after the Houston protest. It is ridiculous. Yeah, I just... I mean, Brunson took free throws, but, like, you watch the game, and it's like... There's still so much contact that isn't being called, especially in the first half. They were just not calling anything, and it would be touch fouls on the Bulls, and they're getting fouls. I, I just... I thought the one on, on Boyan in the fourth... Where look, DeRozan makes the shot anyway. It's a tough shot. It's honestly, an incredible shot that he makes. He he doesn't actually touch him. He doesn't touch him above. He doesn't touch him below. He actually lands outside of where DeRozan's feet land. Feet land. They call that a foul. Um, and honestly, the one they called on him, which they challenged, they didn't get. Like, I know they kept saying, "Well, you know, the the, the ball was." In, I don't think the ball was in his hands when he hit him on the wrist. Like, I, I don't know. I, and if you're gonna call that, I mean. Should probably call a few of the other, a few more the other way. I don't know. It, it was, it was, it was a tough one tonight um, with the refs. That's all I'll say. <sighs> Watch the Bucks be locked in on Sunday from John Leonard. Yeah. I, oh, they will be. They will. Yon is rested this game to play against the Knicks. Yeah, we we will be watching that. Unfortunately, uh, God pray for Josh Hart. Uh, that will be. That will be something for him to do. Well, I mean, OG will probably guard Giannis. So, is he good on Giannis? I have no idea. I mean, he's good on everybody. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Jordan Bow, I blame refs for that loss more than Tibbs. Let's be honest, we would beat this team with heart. I mean, I don't know if they would have definitely would have had a better shot. I mean, all the all that all the precious minutes that were happening in the second half, I guarantee you, Josh Hart is playing all those minutes, every single one. Every single one. Uh, John Larry, is Brunson going to have to play 45 minutes per game in the playoffs? The team just goes to shit when he's on the bench. They have no chance. Probably. Yeah. That's why they're not going to go anywhere in the playoffs, really. Um, They'll be the magic, but, like, that's got to it. Let's just – I don't even give a shit. Just don't – just stay out of the plan, and I'm a happy camper for this season. I'll say that. Uh, Bucks last three games lost to 14 seed Wizards, lost to the 13 seed Grizzly, lost to the 12 seed Raptors, and they will beat the what are we, the five seed? So, the five seed Knicks, they will do that on Sunday because that is that is just our luck. Uh, yeah. Logan Tibbs Roy, you're not a killer. Uh, I like that name. Uh, I heart stuck tonight fumbling and bumbling. 
yeah, he looked like a guy that uh, gave it quite a bit last night. And, yeah, he didn't have a good game. I just have a really tough time shitting on him too much. I don't know about you. I mean, I thought he was fine. Um, I didn't think he was the best, but, like, again, back-to-back, it's – it's kind of hard to find fault with a lot of players unless you're precious as Shula, so. Or Alec Brooks. Uh, back, no, uh, back to back should be abolished and Scott Foster deleted. Scott Foster just did Scott Foster shit in the first quarter and that kind of just deflated the game. I hate that guy a lot. Like a, like a really a lot. I hate him. Um, he sucks. I, I, I still, I, I just, the Josh Hart ejection and then to not even review the, the Drummond one in the fourth quarter. I, I don't, I don't get that. I, I don't get how you can, if you're going to review the Josh Hart one, you have to at least review the Drummond one. I, I just, I, I don't get it. I will never get understand that. I mean, that requires you to understand Scott Foster. And if you understand Scott Foster, you understand fucking FanDuel. So um, that, that's just kind of it. It's brutal. Uh, Tom Thibodeau said the refs told him they had to do it. Regarding the Josh Hart ejection, said officials told him they thought the kick was intentional. Are you fucking kidding me? He, it clearly wasn't intentional. He's trying to brace himself for his fall. Are you? F- so then, what Josh, like what Jalen Brunson gets punched in the face every time he drives, like, are those intentional shots in the face? Draymond, Drummond punched him in the face on the baseline. Pretty sure in front of his face, and Tibbs was calling for a flagrant, and Scott Foster goes no way, and it's just like the inconsistency with officiating is maddening, because you allow contact on one side, and then you don't allow contact on the other side, and it's just what is a foul or what is it a foul? Like if you don't legislate it properly, then you have interpretations like this where it ruins games and just makes games poor to watch. Yeah. That is certainly something. <sighs> okay. Let's keep going here. Uh, Walt Clyde Fraser. Before Brunson came back in the fourth, Deuce couldn't create. JB checks in and Deuce immediately carves up a defense for a bucket. Jalen improves things for his teammates by just being on the court. I agree. You know who also improves things for teammates just by being on the court? Chris Paul. Hmm. Just, 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 just throwing that out there. That is certainly very good for Chris Paul. I am really happy for him. And I hope that he succeeds in his future endeavors that are not in New York. They will be in New York. I am so happy that it will not be in New York. Uh, John Larry Brooks brought up the ball once when Brunson was in and he turned over within five seconds. Yes. That was at 47 to 30 right out of a timeout, actually. Uh, and I believe the Bulls got a three on that possession or an and one on that possession. I don't know which one. And they went up 50 to 30. Uh Also, apparently, the Kings posted a graphic for clinching a top 10 seed. That is filthy. That's pretty funny. Imagine if the Knicks did that. God. <sighs> yeah. Uh, Mo EDD or Ed, Mo Ed, I don't know. My issue with Tibbs is lack of creativity to adjust and force the other team to react. He should have went small and hacked Joe to get their double big off the floor. I mean, you can't hack a team with DeMar DeRozan on the court. Like, well, I mean, I'm, I think he's saying like hack Drummond off. I the know, team. but still, like, I would not try to put a team with DeMar DeRozan in the penalty, given the way the rest were officiating. 
I just don't see it. Plus, he was like hitting his free throws. Like, he got it's like a good groove. So, like, if he doesn't immediately miss two of them, then like, then it's not worth it. Yeah, I also just think like it's okay to trust your team to get. I mean, the, the problem was not forcing misses in the second half. Again, it was. I think what what are the Bulls have been scoring in the second half? Like forty something. Yeah, yeah. Like the problem was the offense died. The offense side, and they couldn't. They couldn't close. They scored forty-seven in the second half. Um, it's what it is. Uh, I, I, I don't. I'm not saying that that strategy might not have worked. I'm just saying, like, I think it's. You know, I don't. I don't know if lack of creativity is even the right word for it at this point because I think Tibbs has tried pretty much most things you would want him to try, and even some things I definitely don't want him to try. Um, so. Yeah, they, they got gamed by Aoden Sumo and Javante Green. Like, yeah, it's that's and they the were, game. and they clearly were comfortable letting Aoden Sumo shoot as much as he wanted. And Aoden Sumo in the fourth quarter was taking some, whew, some bananas threes. I don't know what's going. Yeah, and I gotta say, Precious, like the first month and a half he was here, he was great, and since then he's just fallen off cliff. This is what t- the Raptors fans were talking about, though. This is why he's not worth more than like a couple million a year. He's just not. He's a minimum guy. guy. Yeah, he's he's a minimum guy. Maybe slightly more than that. He's not worth anything more. Um, I would pay him a little bit more than a minimum because then you can just include him in trades um, and then include a minimum guy also. But um, you know, he's a third or fourth big, and and that's fine. That's what he is. But woof. Uh, I wouldn't pay him. Like, yeah. I just don't. I don't understand the point in paying him when you have two draft picks this year. That's just kind of my reason. <laughs> I don't uh, think he provides something that, like... I think you should be prepared for them to pay him. I, I would be... Sh- if he gets a qualifying offer, I would be shocked. I think they can just... I mean... Because I feel... This, if he gets the qualifying... Off? I mean, I would assume his qualifying offer... Uh, I could check it real quick, but, like... If he gets the qualifying offer, he probably should just take it. Which is probably the fear. Yeah, I mean, I think that they can just keep him for less than that also, and I think they have interest in doing it. I like actually believe that they think they can develop him, which maybe they can. I mean, they've, they've they've done wonders on a number of players, but yeah, look, this last month and a half, his, his time in New York has been kind of split. Really awesome start, awful last month. I'm a little bit more sympathetic to it because I think he got played through the fucking roof in February, and it feels like he's been moving in fucking sludge since then. Um whatever we'll see i'm not that pressed about it if it's they lose him great. 6.3 by the way yeah if they if they lose him cool if they yeah, keep him for a couple mil cool i'm not i'm not too yeah i know but like legitimately there's no like if he gets six million dollars he's taking it so yeah and that's kind of like i mean they so then they don't need to extend it but i also don't think they need to worry about like losing like, him yeah like, oh is the team gonna come I, in i get like, i think he's a minimum guy he is yeah. a minimum guy but like if i'm them like get him back on the minimum i would extend the qualifying offer to him because he would just take the he would just take the guarantee 6.3 definitely possible definitely true uh oh, yeah, angus yeah. angus mcgyver burks has crackhead aura burks has he's has crackhead That's burke has got. deadbeat dad aura <laughs> he just shows up and fucks shit up in your life and then leaves like, and he burke, doesn't care yeah burks is the definition of a deadbeat father he's <laughs> He's the guy who like wears the Burberry shirt at the at the baby shower, and you're like, oh my god, like he he is the eject. He is Burks is Reaganomics. Just That's wild. Just came to the team, messed up everything, and will fail to adjust years and years and years later. I just Burks is just Ronald Reagan. Wow. Yeah. That's wild. JL, the Burks and Boga, Boyan shit is so stupid. I don't even care anymore. I don't know how they go from most efficient ball of their careers and dog shit Detroit to this. Because they weren't they they nobody cares about playing Detroit. They're not playing serious ball in Detroit. And I also think there's a difference between Burks and Boyan because Boyan's fuck ups to me are happening in the course of trying to play actual basketball. He's whereas old. Burks yeah, and Burks is like just I, I don't even I honestly cannot describe what Burks is doing. It's unbelievable to watch him right now it's worse than cte it's like legitimate brain damage 
it's like watching James. It would be like watching Jameis Winston play quarterback if Jameis Winston actually had zero talent. So if Jameis Winston was like Nate, so it's basically watching Nate Peterman play quarterback. It's like That's watching Daniel like. Jones play quarterback. Yeah, I guess I don't want to go there, but you did it, so that was you. I mean, it's, it's like you. it's gonna be like it's gonna be like watching the Bills wide receivers next year. Yeah, it's funny because their wide receivers are probably still better than the Giants. I never said they weren't. Well, that sucks for you. I uh, can. Okay. Have fun. Have fun with your team next year. I'm sure they'll be very good. Hey, at least uh, at least our defense is going to be great. Maybe we'll see. Brian uh, Burke is great. Yes, some, I, I hope so for your sake. Hawkeye for We kind of need to win these games, and it's not looking likely. I disagree. I think they'll probably still will win two of three. I think they'll probably beat the Nets. I think they'll beat the Bulls twice. That's enough. They get that done. That's all. That literally is all that matters. I think they also have a good shot against the Celtics because I think the Celtics, they have the one seed wrapped up. Yeah. It's done now. Like they, it's it's totally. They have the home court, but not the playoffs wrapped up. They have the one seed wrapped up tonight. They rested Derek White and Jalen Brown. I think if the Knicks go in there with most of their team healthy, I could see the Celtics just being like, "Yeah, that's fine. We don't need to play this game. We don't need to risk anything. We don't need to go up against a Tibbs team desperate to win a game." That has like we have Josh Hart. To play for. <laughs> They're gonna tell Josh Hart go for the ankle. Like, I doubt they actually try. Yeah, I, I, I could actually see them just being like, yeah, fuck this game, fuck this game. And Sam also, Hauser went one for eighteen. <laughs> this is filthy, bro. And and the other part of this is they don't. If I were them, I would want the Knicks to be in the in like the first round. I would want that to be like a lock. Because they don't have to play them, and I would want the Knicks to have to play some team. I'd be like, no, no, let's make let's get the Knicks in there because they will like fucking try really really hard, and that'll be annoying for another team. I would want that. I don't know. Maybe I'm being bullish, but like, uh, I think I, I think the Celtics toss that game. I really do. And then you're looking at two wins, and you know, look, the, the Heat have game. Everybody has games. They're gonna drop the rest of the way. It's not just gonna be some. The Sixers, are the one team that'll probably win out, but we have the tiebreak over them anyway, so. It doesn't really matter. Uh, moving on. Uh, no, Ra- I thought Boyan DeRozan wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, to be honest. I actually agree with this, but like it doesn't really matter because Boyan couldn't make enough shots to make it count on the other end. Um, so, John Leary beat the Nets, beat the Celtics teams that will be resting probably at the roster in one of the Bulls games. Yeah, it's pretty much that simple. Okay, I don't think we're gonna go um, one and two against the Bulls. So, yeah, yeah, but I I get his point where it's like yeah. you don't need to do anything. I mean, if you get, we'll see. I mean, it just depends on seating, right? If you like, you you have a chance for that last game against the Bulls to mean nothing, or it could mean something, or it could mean everything. Like, so it's just kind of up in the air. Uh, did Atlanta play tonight? Do they lose? Can they lose? Can they keep losing? Is that a thing they can do? That would be nice. It'd be nice to play the Bulls. Last game of the season where they have nothing to play for. That would be cool. Um, okay. Officials don't think the uh, blah, 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 billion attacks from Bam aren't intentional, but Hart was intentional. Got it. Yeah, I – look, that the Hart one is fucking crazy to me. It's crazy. I. That might be one of the worst ejections we've ever seen, dude. It's the worst one. It's it's it is the it's like that and the Tim Duncan one, where he's like laughing on the bench. Yeah, I cannot think. I can't think of a worse in play. Like you get ejected for something, not not even like double technical, not just a like. I cannot remember a worse flagrant two call. And this is even a flagrant two they called on the floor. They didn't call this on the floor. They called a defensive foul on the floor. Right? It was a defensive foul. If I or tech, like was that was that what it was. Yeah, I think so. And it doesn't really matter what they called on the floor. Whatever they called on the floor, to go from that to a flagrant two is... I mean, that's... Uh, I don't even know what to say. I I, I, I don't... I, I have no idea what to say about Scott that. Scott Foster... There's a money line somewhere that Scott Foster took. Him and John Tate Porter were cooking up something. That's... It's just crazy to me. Uh... 
I I don't know. We don't. Uh, what are your thoughts on Bogdanovich? Uh, he needs to make more shots than he misses. I continue to feel that that's probably likely over the aggregate, but uh, we're also running out of time for him to find a consistent rhythm and make a difference. And he did not do that tonight. So that would be my thoughts. Yeah, I I agree. He just like you could the numbers underlying are like not bad like he's good at corner threes like he's shooting like 44 percent of corner threes and he's taking 37 percent of them he's just bad at like the shots that he you require for like creation like he's bad at shots at the rim um he's decent in the mid-range but like really if he shoots like 38 percent of 30 instead of like 35 percent or whatever then like this isn't nearly as big of an issue. It's just the fact that like he's so poor from three. Yeah. He's just he just not has just not found a rhythm at all from three. It's very, very frustrating. Uh I don't I don't really want to do this right now. Um we can save trade draft talk trade talk for later. Do we draft Bronny James? Uh I, yes. I I surely hope not. Um let him cook. Give Bronny give Bronny James some Jason, um Johnny Bryant development and you have a elite connector. He will be Bronny James will be great at Duquesne. Um All right. That's that's you know, it's, du- that's where du- Duquesne is right. nuts, by the way. Nuts. What do you mean? Like, you're telling me he want to go to like Ohio State or something? Um, least, like, get a get a team with at least a chance to like win a natty. Do you know who's coaching at Duquesne? No. Uh, maybe you should Google that. Oh, oh wait, is that the uh, LeBron's high school coach? Right. Might be. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Go fuck yourself. All right. Uh, Uncalled for. Nope. Very called for. Uh, Mo EDD. Bucks lost. Doc's post game presser should be a pay per view. He's playing with the crowd next for sure. Doc will blame everything uh, but himself and maybe Jesus. He might blame. You know, he'll probably be, he'd blame Jesus. He would blame Jesus. You know God. Oh, you know God. He just he gives us challenges and. Sometimes we're not prepared to handle them from the equipment manager to the staff to the hotel lobby floor. <laughs> we need to come prepared. Uh, Larry Israel says, also, OG is really good at coming back after his time. It's like his, he has experience of coming back after a layoff. Yeah, I mean, he looked good tonight physically. It's definitely a positive sign. Thought in the fourth quarter, what he, he, had a, he had a fucking pull up three. In transition in the third quarter from above the and break, I was like, I was, "Why are you doing this?" And then he yeah, went, went in, and I was like, "Okay, you know what? Fine." Yeah, I was like, "I'm pretty sure you've never done this before in your life." Um, but he also hit a really nice midi in the fourth quarter off the dribble. That was nice. Um, he had another one, clo- like a shorter mid range shot that he hit. I mean, he he looked good. He attacked a closeout, had a nice dunk in the third quarter. Um, his defense, I thought, was active. It was good. So. Yeah, not not too worried about OG as far as his physical, like just his physicality. It's you know about making shots and all that shit. So we'll see. <sighs> Chris Burr, Joey Crawford approves that action. Yeah, he surely does. Surely does. Uh, Jordan Bub, how many times has a Nick player been hit in the head where blood has been drawn by wind up and impact without it even being a flagrant heart made unnecessary contact? It contact, but the impact is minimal. Total BS. I, I, I'm sorry. I just will never understand that call. To, a flagrant one. All right, fine. May like I could at least rationalize that. Fine. A flagrant two. That was malicious. Like there was intent, bro. That's that's crazy. That is fucking crazy. That's a crazy call. Yeah, I just he there was no malicious. He wasn't even looking at him. That's the thing. Like, he wasn't even looking at him. So how are you to claim malicious intent when you're not even looking at a guy? I, yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, 
Well, Claude Fraser, once Mitch and OG really get their lungs back next week, the second round team, they got to get their. I mean, OG, I'm not worried about. Mitch, I'm worried about him, man. Like, he had nothing tonight. Like, and I, I'm, it's, yeah, there's nothing to be mad about because he came back faster than expected and he's giving you what he has. But, like, you could just see he, he, he there was, this is a lot, even last game against the Kings, but there are rotations that you can see that you're like, I can tell he wants to do something and his body is just like, eh, I don't know about that one, Chief. We're good right here. We're good right here, actually. There was one where he went for an offensive rebound in the third quarter. He didn't get it. And, it, like, he, he, I don't even know if he got back in the fucking screen. Like, <laughs> when they, when the Bulls are pushing the ball back up, I was just like, oh, wow. This guy is just fucking, he's got nothing. He just has no juice. Yeah. I mean, it's to be expected, but like the fact that he missed that game and then like had to come back and everything, like whatever you're getting from him was just like, it's all you can do, really. Whatever they're getting from him is, I guarantee he's giving, he's just giving you whatever he can right now. And like, yes, it's part of it is him working himself back into shape. But I also think if the Knicks were in a more advantageous position, I'm not saying they wouldn't play him, but I think they would. It, it would be different and we would not care as much and none of this would matter, but we're not because uh, our team basically died on January 27th. And on a night where we got OG and Obi back, they were like, actually fun fact, <laughs> Josh Hart is dying tonight. Sorry, deal with it. Uh, so that was really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. Thank you so much for that experience. Uh, one day we'll get to see this team be somewhat whole all the way without Julius Randall, but that night was not tonight. Uh, <laughs> Chris Bernard, DeMar DeRozan is such a loser, man. Dude does a broad jump board when he takes a jumper. So disgusting. Dude is always looking for a landing area foul. But Brunson is the foul bitter here, folks. Yeah, like, I, I can't stand DeRozan, man. I can't stand it. He is so obviously looking for contact on every jumper in the most disgusting ways. And it's exactly why he always sucks in the playoffs. That and plus he's just... Yeah, he just... The way he plays basketball is not ethical. And he deserves to be a perennial loser. Yeah. Um, I, I, I swear Mike Breen was like, dying for him to get on fire today it was so weird mike green uh, it was has it's, the weird it's every when he gets to his spot it just you just expect it to go in clyde i'm like all right <laughs> you know. he's back in the good old days he's one of the good ones like mike green mike green's favorite players have to be like closeted republicans like because the way he advocates for guys like demar DeRozan, he's like you know he's a hall of famer clyde and i'm like no no, he's not. He's yeah, he a is. ugh that that's gross. What has that's, happened? The, what NBA, a, the the basketball hall of fame is terrible. So you know what? Then again, this makes the case that like if Julius Randle gets like two more All NBA, he's probably okay. making the Hall of Fame. All right. So you know what? I'll take the NBA, I'll take the fucking Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame being a layup line. Okay. Uh, John Lurie, Clyde kept saying OG looks rusty. I was like, I don't think he was that bad. Uh, Clyde is not actually observing what's happening in basketball games anymore. Clyde commentates for vibes. Clyde, Clyde is just coming into a game being like, this is what I think is going to happen and what should happen. And therefore that is exactly what is happening. And then he'll say things that rhyme. He's just Robert Randolph with some good, with some nice suits. Okay. Yeah. He's chilling right now. Clyde is checked out. Clyde is it, checked out. Yeah. This is late career well, Clyde Frazier. This is like Clyde Frazier that's thinking about St. Croix and not being at the game. Uh, this is from Chris Bernhardt. Never forget Lebronto. I would never forget Lebronto. Uh, that was a fun time in the existence of Toronto and in the existence of DeMar DeRozan's stupid, annoying NBA career. He also deserved it. DeMar DeRozan, DeMar DeRozan oh, deserved yes. Le Lebronto. Kyle Lowry did not deserve Lebronto. DeMar DeRozan did. 
I concur with that. Uh, Chris Murray, sports Hall of Famers are great. The MLB Hall of Fame doesn't let anyone in. The NFL, NFL Hall of Fame hates a lot of its players. The NHL Hall of Fame hates Russians. And the NBA Hall of Fame would allow Schwinn in for a street ball game. <laughs> That's actually the one thing I'm pretty sure they would not allow somebody in for. Respect Schwinn. No, you don't have to respect my street ball game. <laughs> I have none. Uh, I shoot threes on spot ups. Uh, something I wish Alec Burks would do. I wish Alec Burks played like me. In, in street ball, that would be actually great for the Knicks if he would just accept that. Look, I, I fully don't... admit that in street ball, I don't dribble and I just end up being Reggie Bullock, and that's cool. It's I, I just take threes, one pull up midi, and I play my ass off on defense. Well, dribbling is not for everybody, you know. Exactly, I don't need to dribble. That's what Sam's for. He's fucking six foot seven. Parlays. <laughs> um. All right, I, I genuinely. I, I don't, it does not feel like no, I'm not sure the chat here is too excited about discussing this game further. I have no desire to talk about this game any further. Do you? No. All right. Uh, I appreciate everybody that's been here for our post game tonight. I apologize that none of us, neither of us, has much energy or desire to talk about this game. It was a very annoying game to watch, and it was a very annoying game for all of you, I'm sure, to watch and live through. Uh, but the Knicks are back on Sunday. Hopefully, they get. Uh, a win in Milwaukee that would be fantastic. Uh, they probably won't because Milwaukee will try super hard because they've lost three in a row somehow. Uh, unbelievably, it's like if they literally had just won these games, they would have the two seed locked up. And they've played jokes, they've played fucking jokes. Um, so shout out to them. I, the teams they're playing are probably upset that they won those games. So whatever, fuck them. Uh, Tyrese. Anything you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, Precious Dachua needs to donate his game check to the Strickland because making me watch that without financial compensation is a crime. Yes. Uh, if if Precious Dachua does want to donate it... Uh, uh, Specifically to me. Forget them. Forget if, the he, if you want to donate to the Strickland uh, as a whole, that would be much appreciated. Uh, we will distribute that equally and everybody will be happy. Uh, but if you want to do that, we are here, and we can also uh, change our coverage of Precious, Precious Chua into much more positive stuff. You'll, uh, ne you'll never get me to do it. Yeah, we probably will. We probably, <laughs> probably would. Uh, all right. Thanks again to everybody that's been in the chat tonight. Appreciate your support. Uh, appreciate everything you guys do for us. Uh, I'm going to plug. So uh, check out the pod that me and Prez dropped today. That was a good one. And check out the uh me and con did a strictly nfl that we recorded today that should be dropping sometime over the weekend so check that out uh again thanks to everybody that's supporting us thanks to our sponsors bet online and cut uh don't bet on politics though people that is our show for tonight i uh, hope everybody has a great one hope you have a great rest of your weekend and hope the knicks have a great rest of their weekend and uh, we will see you on sunday peace